Hey again, citizens. A few people have asked how I pull off some of the landings seen in my videos. So here it is, a landing tutorial that demonstrates the basics of what I do and how you can do the same. You know, landing is probably the most important thing you do when it comes to flying. So being able to do it with confidence and style can add to your experience. Now, before we begin, I do want to say that every ship in the game can perform landings like these to some degree. However, some are easier or more forgiving than others. A light fighter will have less give when it comes to its landing gear, leading to a rougher landing even at lower speeds. Something larger, such as the Freelancer or Cutlass, will have more weight and a more forgiving landing gear, allowing you to be rougher and push what you're able to do with the ship. Now, some of you may already know how these work, but I want to cover a few basic things before we begin. The first part is that most landings will feature heavy use of decoupled mode. For those who are not aware, decoupled mode disables the airplane style flight mode that we're used to, giving us a more realistic spaceflight experience. For example, if I thrust to the right, my ship will continue moving to the right until I apply a new direction of thrust. This also means that if I rotate or pitch my ship, I will continue moving in that same direction. Using decoupled mode and knowing when to switch between flight modes is paramount to how I achieve some of the more extreme landings. The second is the vector indicator. The vector indicator has a self-explanatory job of indicating your vector. What this means is that it points to the direction that your ship is moving, even if your ship is aimed at something else. You may notice it deviate from your crosshair during a hard turn showing that your ship is still moving in a different direction than you're heading until the proper thrust is applied. The vector indicator becomes more apparent in decoupled mode, where you are allowed to position your ship more freely than you would in coupled. Notice how rotating our ship has little bearing on our vector. Now let's see how we can apply this information when it comes to landing. For this demonstration, I'll be using the Drake Cutlass. We have a tolerant suspension in our landing gear and a fairly small footprint to work with. It also helps to be familiar with the handling of the ship you're landing. You know, the first time I attempted to land a Carrick did not go well for me, as I was not familiar with its handling, as you can see. But practice makes perfect, and practicing is how I went from what you saw to what you see now. So we'll start with a basic decoupled landing. Just in case it needs to be said, deploy your landing gear. You'll want to start with a high angle that puts you directly over your landing pad. While in coupled mode, aim your nose for the center of the landing pad. If needed, you can zoom in to confirm you're aligned correctly. Once you're lined up, accelerate or decelerate to a speed no higher than 30 meters per second. If you're attempting this in a smaller ship, you'll need to adjust your maximum speed accordingly. Now, once we've achieved our desired landing speed, confirm that you're still lined up correctly for your landing pad by observing your vector indicator. Once this has been done, you may now decouple the ship and maintain the desired speed. As you descend, pitch your nose up to make your ship parallel with the landing pad. If desired, you can apply light braking once you're closer to the pad to achieve a gradually softer and more cinematic landing. Congratulations! You've completed a basic decoupled landing. Now, let's say you want to try something a little more advanced. We'll look at an angled landing next. These allow for a more natural look when it comes to landing and allow for an airstrip style landing at outposts. An angled landing follows the same basic steps as the decoupled landing we saw previously, with a few differences. Once again, deploy your landing gear. As you approach your landing pad, take your speed into consideration. The lower the angle we approach from, the higher speed we can touch down with. However, a higher speed will mean a longer distance before we come to a complete stop. For places with limited landing area like Port Olisar, 
it'll keep to about 30 meters per second for now. In coupled mode, we will begin to approach the landing pad at our desired speed and angle. Depending on the ship used, we want to put our vector indicator either in the center of the pad or slightly back from center. Larger ships, such as the Cutlass, can clip their landing gear when coming in for a landing, so keep this in mind as you learn what works best for you. Once you have lined up your vector indicator, go ahead and decouple. As you approach, level your ship to be parallel with your landing pad as best you can. Note that you may have to make small adjustments with braking and strafing. This is especially true in atmosphere, where you will need to make multiple adjustments. Once near the pad, braking will once again have reduced efficiency in decoupled mode. Another smooth landing. Now it's time for something fun. We're going to do an unmanned landing. This means that you will not be in the pilot seat when the ship touches down. This is useful for needing to exit the ship as soon as it lands, or even exiting before it lands. Such an example would be at Security Post Korea, where you may be able to get the drop on someone who is waiting for you to exit your ship, not knowing that you've already done so. The steps to this landing are the same as the previous. Again, make sure your landing gear is deployed. We'll start with a slow speed at a higher angle. Once our vector indicator is satisfied, decouple the ship. Pitch upwards until your ship is parallel with the landing area. Depending on server issues, you may also need to disable your engines. Once this is done, Simply exit the seat. With your ship on the proper heading, it no longer needs input from you and you are free to walk about the ship or even make an exit. And that's it! With practice and time, you can add your own flourish and style to how you land, impressing your friends and increasing your confidence in your piloting. Remember that practice makes perfect, and no crash is a reason to stop trying. There will always be greater and lesser pilots than you, and no one can invalidate what you have achieved. That's it for now. I hope you've learned something or at least enjoyed this. Until next time, keep on trucking.